Skype is okay. Welcome to Access Chat. Today we have Andre Resheran joining us, and Andre is a disability inclusion expert. And we're very excited to have him featured because Andre really looks at the world a little differently. Um, and so we just found him very creative and interesting. And he has also joined us multiple times on Access Chat, so he is a regular. So we're very excited to have him. And um, we're going to keep this uh, chat to around 15 minutes because Andre is teaching a class. And so um, it'll. Um, but we're really glad to have you here. So Andre, can you just tell us a little bit about your work in the disability field? Hi Deborah. Hi Antonio and anybody else who's, who's watching and listening. Um, uh, 20 years ago I became a wheelchair user and basically from I was reasonably well enough and fit enough again I started campaigning for the rights of disabled people. Um, in the UK and Ireland we have the law that dates back from 1995 which is basically the year that the accident happened to me. It was a motorcycle accident. And I decided there must be something positive I can do um, with what seemed a really, really negative outcome in life. Um, because I was going to university to do my last exam. Um, as it happened, I still got a really good mark, etc. cetera. Um, but I decided I was going to do something really positive. And I trained first to become what's known as an access consultant to the standards of the National Register of Access Consultants, which is basically a quango set up by um, one of the governments in the United Kingdom. Uh, I was living in the UK at the time. And uh, at the same time, I trained to become what's called a disability equality trainer and a training the trainers trainer. It's a bit of a mouthful, but basically training trainers to go and facilitate or deliver training to businesses, individuals, groups, whatever. Um, and I, I find the work extremely challenging because in the, the initial years, I used to mock myself. I even used to use the C word, I used to call myself a cripple and handicapped. And uh, I know in the United States and Canada and even in La France, they still use the term handicapped. Uh, but that's a term that um, disabled people in the UK and Ireland specifically actually find an offensive term. Um, because and, and I find language a real challenge anywhere I go. Uh, for example, um, in German, it's uh, seinen behindert, and we talk about hindering people. So it comes from the German verb, and you know English. It comes from the German verb uh, hindert. Um, and uh, in in Spain, Antonio, you should know this. Uh, Minos validos, you know, less valid. Um, in English, we also use the term invalid. You know, and it means without worth, having no use. So, uh, you know, I, I looked at one aspect. So I learned um, to deal with uh, aspects of architecture, the built environment, uh, policies, practices and procedures, but how we use language. Language is a very, very important tool and not which a lot of people will uh, say, oh, you're just being PC, politically correct. But it isn't that we don't use the N word to describe uh, African-Americans. Um, we don't use homophobic language to uh, describe people who are gay or transgender or whatever. You know, we, we certainly wouldn't do it and not be legally challenged over it anyway. Um, Ireland, I don't know if you're aware, is the first country in the world to have um, voted 100% towards um, same-sex marriages. So we now lead the world as far as that goes in terms of uh, a stance in equality. Um, I wish we could live in peace and at the same level as well, but there you go. Maybe we can't have everything, but we can strive for it. So I learned um, different aspects of, as I say, policies, practices, practices and procedures. One of the biggest stumbling blocks and probably the single biggest barrier that disabled people face. And now when I use the term disabled people, I mean hidden impairments. Me, um, if I wheel back, people will see I'm a wheelchair user, um, so I'm wheelchair dependent for my mobility, but um, the vast majority of, of impairments are hidden. Um, uh, maybe somebody living with um, uh, learning difficulties on the level that we used to call Down syndrome. Um, uh, you know, relatively speaking, some of the impairments are very, very hidden. For example, as, as a wheelchair user, I represent only 5% of disabled people. 
It's a tiny, tiny proportion. But this is where I talk about what I call, I've coined it the phrase, the domino principle. I believe very, very firmly and very fundamentally, if we get the basics right, as in the physical aspects of access right in the first place, that everything will have a positive knock-on effect. And by, by that I mean, if you were building a wall, you wouldn't build a wall like this, because at the first sign of wind or trouble, pff, the whole thing will fall down. So we build everything in and we, <coughs> a word that I'm not overly happy with, we integrate it. Um, I, I prefer the word inclusion, but, but to, to build things together and to link them very, very firmly together. And that means all the facets of language, all the facets of policies, all the facets of procedures and about how we change the mindset of people because the single biggest barrier that we face is not a physical one. It's the first letter of the alphabet. It's attitude. And I've written a few essays and done quite a few public speaking um, roles and I've always talked that access is the single biggest barrier that disabled people face. Well, um, it, very, very interesting, very interesting work that you do. I will say that in the United States, we do not use the word handicap, and we are very, very focused on um, people first language, and we're very concerned about political correctness. Um, I did see and applaud Ireland um, for taking the rights to make sure that everybody's included um, in doing the right thing by people that are gay. So I, I was very impressed as much as the world was watching that happen in Ireland. And Antonio, Antonio is from, Portuguese, from Portugal and speaks Portuguese and Spanish as well, but he happens to be your neighbor. He is in Cork, Ireland. That's right. So, <laughs> yes. No, yes. In, so in he fact, is no, also uh, very proud. People have been very excited over, over the last coming months uh, campaigning uh for 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 the yes so uh, you you see people from different quadrants of society always uh, they all uh, fighting for 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 the same issues and it it was very interesting because there was not many uh, for no i do, i i didn't see many politicians involved there was not a political message it was more more about Providing people with uh, with with the rights that are in, that they are entitled to, so it was very interesting to to see all all that energy, and it was a, a very organic campaign that and you were able to see everything across you know Twitter, Facebook, people were very energetic in the way how they were trying to pass their message. Yeah, yeah. and it's a very important because we talk about equality as disabled people, and that's an equality issue. Even when I do, I'm sorry to show this, I'm, I'm publicizing, I know, but even when I do a concert, um, for me, I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to go without food for days on days on end. So for me, just being able to come to one of my charity concerts, um, I don't charge any more than £10 a ticket because to me, that's an access issue. So an access issue isn't necessarily just because somebody's impaired, visually impaired, blind, uh, hearing impaired or like me, mobility uh, impaired, um, you know, an, an access issue can be, you know, the, the right of access to the theatre. The right of access to the theatre might mean I can't afford to pay 35 or £65 pounds a ticket. Can you price it at, at, uh, at a market that where I can actually participate? And so that, that's what I do um, in terms, I can't speak for Michael Bugley, etc. But uh, one can hope that they will think of these things and promoters will look at access is not just being a physical physical uh, manifestation it has to be on a person's ability you know uh, uh, to afford such a thing it's the same as uh, like means testing um, here in the Channel Islands um, in Guernsey specifically um, uh, every single claim is means tested uh, blind and visually impaired people in the Channel Islands of Guernsey um, are not um, uh, perceived as disabled people through Social Security and every single application for help is means tested yet the other island not very far away called Jersey um, it doesn't matter if you're a multi-millionaire or if you're on you know benefit because you, you, you can't work whatever um, whatever you need as a disabled person that need is met at the point of, of actual need so if heaven forbid a politician became a wheelchair user tomorrow, 
and then made an application for a wheelchair. That wheelchair is granted, you know, obviously designed specifically to their needs, but without means testing. But here in Guernsey, it's not, and Guernsey is no, uh, n no less rich um, than um, than Jersey, and, and I find that a, an, an issue as well. Okay, that's okay. It. so. It, it seems that we have we have that uh, that dif dif different approach, but you know, why do you think that 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 uh, difference uh, exists? Is about you know because we have quite a good legislation at the European Union level, so knowledge people know what needs to be done today. So what was? Sorry, I didn't want to talk over you. The, the thing is, is that um, uh, the Channel Islands are what's called crown dependencies. Um, so if you like, it's too, it, it would take too long to explain all that, but we're actually not part of the United Kingdom. We're not part of Ireland. We're not still part of the Duchy of France, but we're way, way, way back, um, but not part of Europe either. So it's a completely standalone country. So basically they could put two fingers up to the world and say, we're not doing anything. Um, what people may or may not know is that none of the Channel Islands have any rights uh, in legislation for disabled people. So I can be openly and actively discriminated against as a disabled person. It doesn't matter if I'm black, white, gay, or disabled. And I'm completely discriminated against. And remember, you can be a combination of all of those. You know, you can be black and disabled, you know, gay and disabled, etc., etc., etc. So uh, we don't have any rights, and that's what I've been campaigning for. I've lived here since 2007, when I left La France, as I call it, um, and came here and settled here, and I've been campaigning here ever since. Um, it's a long, long slog, but we, we are getting there. We hope that we may have um, legislation by 2017. Okay, but, but, but is, is there a... a, a oh, Andre. Sorry, go ahead on to that. No, is there a political involvement? Uh, how, how, uh, when you say when you mentioned that you are campaigning, uh, what exactly, what type of people are, try, are you trying to influence? Uh, we are trying to influence politicians, obviously. Um, here, uh, they're called deputies, uh, and the, the the parliament is actually called the states of Del deliberation. Put my teeth back in states of deliberation, and. Um, uh, we lobby politicians, the, the deputies, as they're called, which is a French term, the député. Um, and um, we now have a disability inclusion officer, so that's a civil servant. Uh, and we now have a disability champion who's a deputy. And um, both of those are helping us uh, formulate. And um, there's a fantastic man here in the Channel Islands who has done incredible work behind the scenes. His name is Robert Platts. And if you ever get the chance to speak to him, um, you won't get in the word edgeways uh, because he's, he's so knowledgeable on the, the on the subject. He is basically writing the law for what we call the law officers. And our law, we hope, you know, in inverted commas, uh, will be based on the Canadian model but a bit more Guernsey centric, but they, we find that the, the Canadian model is one of the best models, if not the best model uh, on the planet, because you don't have to justify that you're a disabled person. What you have to prove is discrimination. Yeah, um, and I don't know if you're aware, both of you, that in the UK law, I can sue an individual, but if my human rights are abused, I cannot sue an individual, I have to sue an entity. And that's much, much more difficult. Um, the Channel Islands has signed up to the Human Rights Act of 2001, um, but has not really ratified it and will not be allowed to ratify it until we have um, disability equality legislation or anti-discrimination uh, for disabled people in place. So yes, definitely we're, we're lobbying everyone and um, uh, I'm actually campaigning on a fairly regular basis. I, I did a thing which I don't really like to do if I'm, I'm telling the, the complete truth. I believe in equality training. I don't believe in awareness training. For me, awareness training with, went out with Captain Cook and sunk with the Titanic. Okay, awareness training is where I put dark glasses on you or uh, put white noise in your ears or strap you into a wheelchair user and suddenly you know what it's like to be a disabled person. I don't believe that's correct. I believe it creates a completely false Thank perception you. Uh, because the argument I use is um, put a bodysuit on a man with breasts, etc., etc., and um, put makeup on him and a dress, 
or paint a, a white man black or a white woman black and suddenly they know what it's like either to be a woman or, or to be a, a, a person of color and then be discriminated against on those aspects. For me, it creates a completely false perception. So that, that's never really where I'm coming from. But I had to bite my tongue, as the saying goes, and I did do it. But it actually opened so many doors for me, which I really wasn't expecting. Um, and it was like filmed as well by the two uh, uh, main uh, television channels here and broadcast on, on the, the mainstream media. Uh, so the six o'clock news was just very important news. And um, I, it, it really has helped, maybe only this much, but it has helped move the agenda forward that, that little bit further. Sorry, Deborah, you were gonna say. No, 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 I agree. I think, I think, I think it's really good information. Uh, are you, um, and I know that we wanna be conscious of your time, Andre. I, I know that you had a training class. So she hasn't arrived yet, so we'll just keep talking until she arrives. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. So, are y'all considering the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities? I know over 150 countries have signed, and a lot of them have ratified it. Not the United States. We've signed it, but we haven't ratified. But are y'all considering participating in the CRPD? Because it's very specific what it has as well. It would be complementary to the other things you're doing. Yes, it would be, and that's that. We are hoping that we can uh, marry the whole thing together. Um, but it's okay. it's really complicated here because whilst we can write the law, it has to then go to what's called the Privy Council in the UK because of it being a Crown yeah. dependency, and then that will uh, achieve assent and then be made uh, put on the statute books for want of a better uh, expression, um, and then becomes law. Um, but w what we're trying to do. Um, and the difficulty with having to have a law in place, it's the hammer. And we're trying yes. to avoid the hammer. What we're trying to do is, back to that A word again, we're trying to change attitude, which means we've got to change the mindset. <clears throat> if we change the mindset, we change the policies, we change the practices, we change the procedures, and that doesn't need any law. That doesn't require any law. That doesn't require me to sue anyone. We just need that mindset to change in such a way that um, just even though even though my the camera, um, and I'm pointing up here, you can probably see my index finger, even though the camera's up there, um, I can't really look at you. So I'm, I'm looking left and right as if I were doing training because I think that's what the... Um, uh, software manufacturer, computer manufacturers have missed a trick on. The camera should be right in the middle, see if I can point, should be somewhere there on screen so that whenever I'm looking, it looks like I'm looking at you because I'm, I miss the engagement of your eyes whenever I'm looking directly at the camera as I am now. But I want you to see my eyes as I talk with you so that you see I'm fully engaged. That for me is the basic level of inclusion. And I teach that whenever I teach it, it's not the right term. That's what I say whenever I do a qualities training. At the most fundamental and the most basic level of inclusion is about looking around the room, smiling. Um, if, the, if it's someone who's blind or visually impaired uh, and they will permit that, then it might be um, a hands-on thing or whatever. But it's, it's about that physical, that aspect of inclusion, that physical aspect where you can see that I'm genuine, hopefully, uh, that you can see that I really, really want to engage, etc., etc. where I can't do that at the minute, but now I have to look away from the camera to see your eyes, uh, which are on my right, Deborah, and your eyes, Antonio, as you're smiling, you're on my left. And my student has just arrived, hopefully she'll come in, and um, I'm okay. just have to stop very soon thereafter, <laughs> that's okay. Have I given you enough of... of um, background and what, what you would like to understand from my perspective. Yes, yes. Yes, and, and we appreciate you being flexible with us, Andre, since yesterday was a holiday. And so thank you for taking the time to, you know, do this uh, interview with us. Sometimes Skype behaves better than other times, and that's why we're always so glad Antonio um, is here to help. And Neil was unable to join us uh, for this, so he will watch and get caught up. But we're looking forward to talking you up at the um, 
during the, well, really tweeting with you at the tw tweet chat. And I know we have our six questions done. So thank you so much for your time. Just and we will let you go and go to your students. Right, you can just thank you very much. Hello, sir. Just, just, just wave and say hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Amy. Hello. Okay. Hello, Hi. Amy. Lovely to see you and lovely to chat with you. And Hi. Look forward okay. to Hi, Amy. PM. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. See you in in a, in a on access chat and look, okay, looking great. for. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Okay. Bye. Bye.